On this Tuesday episode of the Locked On Texans, Blake Cashman has been cashing in. We talk about an unsung hero for this Houston Texans defense, which will lead us to the improvements in the run game. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Can we talk Texans on this For Tuesday? For a minute. Welcome to the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you to all of our first-time subscribers and listeners, whether that's via YouTube or on whatever you find your podcast. If this is your first time, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Again, on YouTube or wherever you find your podcast. If you are one of our favorite people in the world our returning listeners lending your ear for another episode thank you for stopping by as we continue to talk texans here on this tuesday a reunion with desmond king and the improvements of the run defense cody and i will talk about that along with highlighting blake cashman we do think that he needs his own little segment i'm your mm-hmm. sports your texas football analyst john some sports guy hickory and of course joining me as always is sports illustrator's own you know what it is. The inside man in the locker room, in the post-press conference, the guy who got his ear to the streets, which is basically the Houston Texans locker room. Hmm. Cody Davis, today, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Cody, let's kick it off talking about Blake Cashman right now. Uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. You know, <laughs> at the beginning of the year, we, we like Blake Cash, but remember how much we highlighted him mm-hmm. during training camp. And we thought that he was going to be a very good rotation guy. As of right now, he is the lead lean, linebacker, excuse me, the lead linebacker for the Houston Texans. Still a performance on Sunday. First time getting some reps at Mike. He goes out there, has a career day, 19 tackles, which ties the franchise record for the Houston Texans. He also has had a sack that game, a couple of tackles for loss, flying everywhere for Houston. Now the lead man in terms of tackles for this franchise through the first, you know, nine games of the year for the Texans. What's been, what's when we look at Blake Blake Cashman? What has been, I guess, standing out the most for you from OTAs training camp to now? Let's just give him his flowers because he's been a true unsung hero for this Texans defense? To answer your question, John, I will say consistency. Because you and I, we've been covering this team for a minute now, and viewers and listeners, you guys will agree agree to this as well. When you go all the way back to training camp, Blake Cashman was the star of training camp. I believe he finished training camp with four or five interceptions. Uh, We saw how good that he was playing during the preseason and you guys know that there has been several guys over the course of these last couple of years especially since the texans started their rebuild where we'd be like man he's looked really good throughout training camp he has looked really good throughout the preseason and yet when the regular season get here their production dips off and either they come close to the expectations we had or they never come close to the preseason expectations that we had for them. But for Blake Cashman, John, to your point, um, Sunday was a career day for this young man with 19 tackles. But the most impressive thing about that was that was the third time this season he finished with 10 or more tackles. Prior to that, his career high was 15 that took place during the Texans' victory against the New Orleans Saints, which was the week where he did win AFC Defensive Player of the Week. And when you take a look at Blake Cashman's production throughout the whole entire season, it has been nothing but phenomenal. First and foremost, If we put together a list, let's say top 10 impactful players throughout this whole entire season, top 10 players who have played the most important factor reasoning into why the Texans are six and four as of right now in the hunt for the playoffs. Matter of fact, they have a playoff spot as of right now. Blake Cashman would definitely be 
on that list. This young man has definitely put together a career year. By the way, this is his second season with the Houston Texans, but it's even more meaningful and impactful because last year he spent majority of his time on special teams. In 2022, the majority of his snaps, uh, the majority of his snaps, 72% came on special teams. This year alone, 70% of his of his snaps came on the defensive side of the ball. When you go and take a look at his production from a number standpoint in terms of run defense, pass rush, um, pass covers, this man has put together an overall grade on pro football focus of 87.3, which has him ranked as the seventh highest linebacker mm. in the game today. Blake Cashman has been phenomenal, and this is what Coach D'Amico Ryans had to say about his production, not just in terms of what took place against the Arizona Cardinals, but in general. Blake did a really good job for us. Uh, throughout the whole season, Blake has shown up and made plays for us. Uh, yesterday, the thing that stood out for me with Blake was him stepping in at the Mike linebacker spot, which is a position he hasn't played all year, but for him to step in and – handle the communication right really well. I think that just speaks to Blake and his growth and you know how important he is to our team. Right. Being able to play multiple spots is really important for us. And Blake stood up, made a lot of plays for us yesterday and he's done that all year. So very encouraged with Blake's growth throughout the year. When you take a look at the 2023 Texans as a whole, I will go ahead and say this might have been one of, if not the most surprising team in franchise history. When you take a look at how young they was, you're going out there with a rookie quarterback, you know, um, first year head coach in D'Amico Ryan, first year play caller and Bobby Sloyd, you know, you have Matt Burke coming along and, you know, it was just a lot of uncertainty. We all thought that this team, it was going to take time for them to be this good, this soon, this fast. However, they have exceeded the expectations. And when you break down, the most surprising players, the most surprising things that took place throughout this season so far, Blake Cashman is at the top of that list because even though he had a phenomenal training camp, he looked good. He looked good during preseason. I would have never imagined us sitting here heading into week 12 against the Jacksonville Jaguars, thinking to myself, Blake Cashman is one of the most impactful players for the Houston Texans this season. First off, you know what kills me? What? The amount of times we say this young man. <laughs> we well, are no I... longer the young man. <laughs> I just, I just, that kills me at times. But you, you, Cody, you're absolutely right. When talking about this particular young man, you know what sums up Blake Cashman for the Houston Texans this year? It starts with a C. One word. Consistency. Mm -hmm. So judging Denzel Perriman. And I mean, in all areas of what you want from your linebacker in 2023, from a modern linebacker. Judging Denzel Perriman, we've said the same thing throughout the entire year. Good at helping Houston stop the run, which we'll get into that in the next segment, but lacks the consistency as a playmaker in dropping back in coverage for the Houston Texans linebacker core. Christian Harris. Consistency has been an issue with him, just not being able to put it together throughout from game to game, from game to game, just being consistent with putting the back, putting back to back performances together. Now he hasn't been able to do that as of late. But again, remember, guys, at one point throughout the season, Christian Harris had lost snaps. Mm -hmm. I think there was one game I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was one game where I think he was only featured on defense maybe five times, five snaps. But when you look at Blake Cashman, you're looking at a, a linebacker for the Houston Texans that has only allowed 7.4 yards per catch. Career best for him. Only allowed one TD. Three pass breakups. The percentage percentages when quarterbacks throw his way, this is according to PFF, so take it with a grain of salt, 69.2. Second best in, in his career. But the best in his career, which was 60%, he only played in a total of 33 snaps. This year he's playing in a total of over 400 snaps, and he's been effective. We already know about the 72 tackles on a year, right? Look at the plays that result in a failure for the offense, according to PFF, the defensive snaps, and this is one of those advanced stats that I do like. Before this year, his career high back in 2019 for the New York Jets was 14. So far for Houston, 
He's sitting at 28 defensive stops. Hmm. And those are the plays that result in a failure for the offense. He's been effective for Houston. He's been able to be everything that you want from a linebacker in 2023, being able to go up against the run and make plays, right? In terms of playing downhill, I think Denzel Perriman still has an edge over him as a downhill linebacker, but Blake Cashman is right there. Blake Cashman is dropping back. Blake Cashman is taking care of guys maybe running through the middle on a drag route. Blake Cashman is at his spot when you see the linebacker, I mean, excuse me, the wide receiver or a running back in the flats. Blake Cashman is there, and he's not missing a, a gang of tackles. He's securing tackles. He's helping his team defensively, which we have to highlight in the last five games how good that Blake Cashman has been for the Texans defense, which has resulted in Houston keeping – opponents getting opponents off the field on third downs hmm. right in their last five games the houston texas have held opponents to 23 of 66 on third down attempts and a lot of that is due to blake cashman just kind of being a very impactful player in between the d-line and the secondary so things that are coming up in the intermediate route you know part of the field for the houston texas defense He's cleaning that up, man. He's doing a very good job of just helping his team get guys off the field, and he's consistently doing it. Missed the first couple of games of the year, but since then, he's been on a tear. By far the best Houston Texans linebacker, a guy that his name, Cashman. Uh, Nick Casario is going to have to uh, cash the man out hmm. next year. I don't think he's going to command a whole lot in free agency, of course, or a big contract, nothing like that. But he's a guy that I think Houston should retain. And, and overall, you look at the 11 tackles against the New Orleans Saints. You look at the, uh, the, the 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 stellar performance that he had Sunday. You're looking at some of these performances where you're coming off and you're thinking to yourself, has Blake Cashman always been this good? And I, I want to take time to pivot what Blake Cashman is doing over to D'Amico Ryans, mm-hmm. Matt Burke, right, the defensive coaching staff. And I think we need to take some time throughout the show, and I will – just to highlight how good of a job, damn good of a job they've been doing with coaching up players. And a lot of times this year, it's been on both sides of the ball, of course, but on the defensive side of the ball, too, it's been coaching the next man up. They have done a very good job of helping these guys be put in the best situations, which is something that uh, D'Amico Ryan's talked about in reference to Jalen Petrie in terms of his instincts. He can't teach instincts. You're going to put him in the best situation to make a play. Blake Cashman has been one of those players that – because of that, he's taken the you know the most of his opportunities, making plays, and has again by far been the best Texans linebacker and a top three defender for the Houston Texans defense this year. You should not have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. In a couple of weeks, Anita Baker is coming to town. Unfortunately, I'm not able to go, but my mom will be going to see Anita Baker. Why? Because Game Time has made it easy to buy tickets to music events or if I want to go watch the Rockets because my favorite co-host in the world ain't got me no tickets yet and I can go watch the Rockets or if, if there's a comedy show coming to town, I could take my wife to get away from you know the baby or if I want to go to a theater event, I can do all of that with Game Time the app. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices. Views from your seat, my favorite feature, and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Zone deals where you pick the section and game time picks the seat for an average of an 18% saving on that ticket. The game time guarantee means you'll get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You're not beating that nowhere else. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N NFL Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. This episode is also brought to you by Better Help. Listen, this time of the year can be a lot. I know it, Cody. I'm sure you've experienced just you miss a loved one. The holidays can, you know, bring about, and it's natural for it to bring about some sadness or anxiety. 
But adding something new and more so something positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all of the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable to, to your schedule. You don't got to fight through traffic. You don't got to fight through any of that. You can do it right in the comfort of your home or in your car before you go in. Sometimes I like to sit in the car at home, in the garage, in the, in the, in the parking space, and you just want to chill before you go in the house. You know what? Utilize that time with, with, with BetterHelp. Right, you can do it therapy in your car, just chilling with the AC on, relaxing and comfortable. Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season. It can't always be the Houston Texans, so find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp H E L P dot com. Slash locked on. Welcome back in locked on Texans listeners and viewers. Before we talk about the improvements to the run defense, Cody and listeners, please, and I mean please take time out. Excuse me. What are you looking forward to the most this year, dish wise, for Thanksgiving? Yeah. That's- being able to cover a team in both see, the NBA he, he and the sport. NFL. What that, do you want to you know, eat? Uh, what do I want to eat? Some old, some old doves. Some old doves. Okay. Okay. Some old doves. All right. Because well, the I, last I, couple of years we've been covering this team by Thanksgiving. This is all we might as well look forward to the draft. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm looking forward to some dressing in this year because I'm not a big sweet guy. I'm going to look forward to some pies. Mm. I don't. Mm. I don't like sweets. I, I rarely eat sweets, but it's going to change this year mm. because things have been looking sweeter for the Houston Texans, right? We, we're looking at a team defensively that, and we and I, and we got to understand, right, Cody? We look at CJ Stroud and the performances and the season that he's been having as a rookie and the whole MVP conversation, which pretty much wraps up. Offensive rookie of the year. When you when you when you have a quarterback as good as CJ Stroud has been, you know, a lot of times the conversation surrounding that player will be around that team will be that quarterback, rightfully so. But I think when you look at Houston's past, even dating back to Deshaun Watson's time here, that last year, the run defense has been horrendous year in and year out going on three years, three, four years, where it just seemed like the moment so they lost DJ, DJ Reader, Reader this this defense were not, was not able to stop a nosebleed. And when they lost Jadavion Clowney, which I think a lot of people aren't necessarily equating to uh, with the, the, the amount of teams that were able to come in and run on this team. Yes, DJ Reader played a big part of that, but J- J- Jadavion Clowney, who's having a phenomenal year in Baltimore, was also a very good run stopper for the Houston Texans defense. And, and I think that's why we're looking at Will Anderson. I'm looking at Will Anderson mm. like that too. But the improvements to the run defense, guys, has teams had the opportunity to run on Houston throughout the year? There's, there's been a couple of times, no doubt about it. But if we look solely the last five games during that stretch, the Texans run defense – has had some stellar performances. In the past, we've seen teams who haven't particularly run the ball well come to play the Texans and get a spark. And remember, this is a team that allowed 170 yards on the ground last year, but not this year. The New Orleans Saints, 3.6 yards per carry, 89 yards. Panthers, 1.8 yards per carry, 44 yards. The Bucs, 76.9 yards. Was coming into that game, 2.6 yards per carry, 81 yards on the day. The Bengals, not necessarily a good running team. They did run the ball well in terms of yards per carry or or 4.1 per carry, but they only garnered 66 yards. And the Cardinals, 4.9 yards per carry, 123 yards on the ground, 51 came from Kyler Murray. And I also think it's important to highlight that Houston's best two run defenders 
You could probably live without Henry Toto, but Denzel Perriman was also out as well. So you're looking at a player that can impact that game in that way who did not play Sunday. And I think that's why the Arizona Cardinals had some opportunities to uh, be, you know, efficient on the ground against the Texans. But this run defense, I think, needs a lot more credit. D'Amico Ryans, uh, Jaquez, Coach Cezier, um, Matt Burke, everybody, they're bought in, right? I don't think I've seen as many plays this year, especially in this five-game stretch, where you're seeing players, you know, swarming to the defense, I mean, swarming to the ball carrier, excuse me, as consistently and as often and as ferocious and as fast as the Texans have been in the past five games and at times throughout the year in different spurts. I don't think we've seen a Texans defense take the challenge of stopping the run and actually not only taking a challenge, but going out there and winning, right? Like teams are not necessarily able to just come in on this defense and run wild. I think you look at the addition of a, again, Will Anderson, doing a very good job of setting the edge with those tackles for losses, doing a good job of the pressure that he creates, along with the deep tackles, who I think have played better as of late, especially during this five-game stretch. You're, you're seeing the deep tackles benefit from the pressure. Not only Will Anderson, but John Grenard, who's also been active in the run game as well as a defender. And that has allowed, because of the edge defenders and the deep tackles, especially of the last couple of games, playing more discipline and the addition of Khalil Davis, who has been, I think, an unsung hero to the mm. defensive line unit as a rotational player. You're seeing those guys play discipline, play their gaps. And with that, that's allowing the linebackers to flow in and out of lanes more consistently to play faster and get downhill and get tackled for loss. Or maybe you're looking at a linebacker second and eight instead of second and four because a running back was able to kind of get some more yards because nobody was there. I am very impressed with the job, the run defense. Uh, the defense has done uh, stopping the run. And Blake Cashman, unsung hero, he's a big part of that. Malik Collins is a big part of that. Khalil Davis is a big part of that. The two edge defenders and the rookie and John Grenard, they've been a big part of that. At times when he's playing in the box, Jalen Petrie or Jimmy Ward have been a big part of that. It's different this year. And I think because of the culture that's been set, you're seeing guys play for each other, and you're seeing guys swarm. So the mentality of the, uh, you know, the what, what he brought over, the swarm mentality, but you're seeing it on the field, phenomenal defense. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal on how Houston took the challenge of stopping teams coming in, being able to run on them, and we're seeing how successful they've been able to be. The improvements of the run defense is literally an example of how quickly – Coach D'Amico Ryans and his coaching staff has been able to get this team on the right track. John, you talked about the last five games, but let's go back to the first five games of the season when they was giving up an average of 118 on the ground. Um, and out of those five games, there was only one time when they did not give up over 100 yards on the ground, and that came in the loss against the Atlanta Falcons, which still to this day, I still don't understand how they lost that game. That's another conversation for another day. But even then, it was like we were starting to see – what Coach D'Amico Ryan said, Matt Burke, and the rest of his coaching staff, we were starting to see the idea of how they want to stop the run and the fact that they wasn't giving up over 150 and 107 yards through those first through, through those first five games. We were automatically saying, hey, there's improvements with this Texans defense. But the fact that they have been able to put together this run over the last five games where they have given up an average – of 75 yards on the ground. And to be honest with you, John, I think over the last five games, the only player who has had an opportunity to literally run on the Texans defense was Kyler Murray, to your point. And I don't even want to consider him to that point only because we know Kyler Murray loves to just run around in circles and then just all of a sudden break out and go. Like we saw it Sunday. And to be honest with you, that was the first time that I saw Kyler Murray in person. And I never realized how fast that young man is. Oh my God. I think remember I told you that when I was sitting next to you. Like, I never realized how that Kyler Murray was this fast when you see it in person. But this is part of the reason why they have a shot to get to the playoffs and stopping the run, especially against Travis Etienne, is going to be a major point of emphasis. Yeah. 
for this team moving forward, especially considering that this is going to be another game that they're going to that they're going to have to go into without the services of Denzel Perriman. However, I, to your point, Blake Cashman, we already know you coming, baby. And I do want to mention before I go back to highlight the Texans defense before we move on, the Jags aren't necessarily a good rushing team right now. Travis Etienne has looked mildly like a pedestrian, uh, 3.7 yards per carry since that Bills game, four games under 60 yards on the ground, uh, a high of 3.9 yards per carry in one game and a low of 3.1 yards per carry in another, in another game during that five-game stretch. So Travis Etienne and that run, that run game doesn't scare me if I'm Houston. I mean, you don't I mean, want to take any of these teams lightly, but this is a team, when I look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, they are still trying to find their identity. And as of late, in the last five games, they have struggled to really get their ground game going. It hasn't been efficient. But back to that defense. When we no, look I want to say this real quick. And, and look, this is this is highlighting the Texans' improvements. They did put up 116 yards in a winning against Jacksonville in week three, I think that was. And Travis ECN did have, I think, 90 for like 15 carries. Right, but I also think that was a different Texans team that was still trying to – you know, kind mm-hmm. of figure some things and out. That, that's why I say it, it, it points to the Texans' improvements. Improvements, ex- a- 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 absolutely. Uh, during this turnaround, improvement era this year for the Houston Texans, uh, and I'm on PFF, again, take this with a grain of salt, but in terms of snaps where defenders was out there to make a play against the run, Will Anderson, 22 tackles. Blake Cashman, 22, excuse me, 22 tackles. Between those two players, they have 32 stops. John Bernard, 18 tackles, 15 stops. Denzel Perriman, 18 tackles, 13 stops. Jalen Petrie, 17 tackles, 9 stops. Also has 9 missed tackles. That has to change. Henry Toto, 16 tackles, 9 stops. So you're looking at a team that they're just making it difficult. And again, especially during this five-game stretch, they're making it difficult for teams to – have a different element of their offense. They're making a lot of these teams very one-sided. And if you're able to do that, oh my gosh, the, the possibilities are endless. You want to score this NFL season with FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book? Let me give you a secret. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Cody, you know what's popping right now? NFL season, NBA season, and both Houston teams are looking better than what they've looked in the past. You also got college basketball, men's and women's college basketball. They got it all. And the app is easy to use with a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get in on the action of the NFL season right now. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. You want Texans? You you want Jags with wig? Mm. You, you mm. want sports all the time? You want Rockets with Locked On Rockets? You whatever you want 24-7 streaming. Now, back to the Houston Texans. <sighs> Sometimes... Saying goodbye is a little too hard. You know, sometimes you got to spin the block a little bit. Sometimes you got to, you know, make that difficult call to say, hey, I miss you. <laughs> things are not necessarily the greatest. It could be a little better. And I miss certain things you used to do. Like you used to cook certain meals. And oh my in a Texas case, you were able to cover a certain way. You know, you, you were able to kind of be more of a secure cover guy. And, you know, Desmond King or for Desmond King, hey, Houston. Food wasn't the same like I like how it was in Houston out in Pittsburgh. Mm. The weather wasn't the same, man. The, you know, the women wasn't the same. A lot of things would have said, Can I come back home? Hey, hello, big head. 
And now we're talking about a reunion between the Houston <laughs> Texans and our former nickel cornerback who played good for Houston in two seasons, Desmond King. I'm stung that they brought him back. And not and not saying stung as in, you know, he was a sorry player or anything like that. First and foremost, he was by far everybody's most surprising cut on the cut down day. And there were some things that did go on behind the scenes that we're not about to get into, but just know there were some things going on behind the scene that went into the Texans' decision to release him. But my only concern now is this, John. He goes to Pittsburgh. It seemed like it was an opportunity for him to help be a consistent factor in their defense like he was over the last two years here for um, the Houston Texans. However, things didn't work out there. Um, and my only concern is why didn't it not work out in Pittsburgh? However, what I would like to say as the player that was by far one of the – we had many to choose from – but I think if you put together a list of the top 15 best players over the last two years, um, Desmond King name will be on that list, um, especially when you look back at the 2021 campaign um, when, God, I can't remember who it was, when you had that issue going on, when you was putting Lonnie Johnson from cornerback safety back to corner. Um, and there was an injury to, I can't remember who that cornerback was, John. You got to help me. And anyways. Him and Taviera Thomas ended up filling in the void that was needed for cornerback one and cornerback two. And over the last two years, Desmond Key was a player in 33 games, 182 total tackles, 17 pass deflections. And John, this is a team fighting for a playoff spot. And I think, once again, he's he's been brought back. He's on the practice squad roster. I think probably after this game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he's definitely going to be elevated um, to the 53-man roster. But just knowing that they have a guy that can be reliable, valuable, whenever his number is called, just make me a little bit more confident in the Texans' ability to go out there and get the stops that they need as they continue this push towards the playoffs. Is the return of Desmond King, does that indicate how long Jimmy Ward may be out and maybe they want to get some – additional help at that safety position. He does have a hamstring injury, and those he, hamstring he, injuries can be tricky. As we know with with uh, D- Derek Singley, um, somebody else, was it Brevin Jordan that was out for a handful of games with a hamstring injury as well this year? Oh, it wasn't Brevin Jordan. It's um, another player. You mentioned, oh, Juice Scruggs. <laughs> Ju- Juice Scruggs, who hasn't returned back yet. So I, I think this may be an indication of Houston just trying to bulk up their secondary help with Jimmy Ward being out a handful of games um, and, and also looking at this this move doesn't surprise me after the last two outings from Jalen Petrie, right? And I think Houston may want to look to give him more opportunities down in the box where he's a, an X factor as a player. But deep back safety, he struggled this year. And so maybe that's an indication of what's to come. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texans podcast wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. I'm always going to call it Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And uh, let's just have a great week, man. The vibes are strong right now. Mm. Thanksgiving is here in a couple of days. We're feeling good. Let's have a good week. Really quick, I'm looking back at this 2021 roster. Good Lord, this roster was terrible. But it was a mixture of Lonnie Johnson going back and forth between safety corner, corner safety. Vernon Hargraves, the third, got injured. And then you had to also. Was on that roster? Well, who? Was Philip Gaines on that roster? Philip Gaines, Philip Gaines. I don't think so. I think he was on the previous year. 2020. But then you also have to go back and forth and rely on the subpar services of Terrence Brooks and Traymond Smith. My God, this roster is bad. Terrence Smith played pretty decent for Houston, if I remember correctly. But he wasn't a starter, though. No, he was not. Because remember, towards the end of that season, Tavier and Desmond was your corner one, corner two. They were starting. 
That's true. But good lord, Justin Britt, we was never would <laughs> see that. That should be a thirty for thirty. What happened to Justin? Brit, because that's still a crazy story. But as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. AJ Moore, like this, this roster was oh my god. Until next time, <laughs> peace. <laughs>